was not one of the greatest moments of my career, but really one of the greatest moments of my life. You should be on, you know, bring this to Broadway. That was just excellent. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It had a, like a good narrative. I loved how we sat right on the scene and it just made me feel like I was in it. Like I actually got afraid when the shots happened. I got scared. <laughs> uh, it was great. Yeah, really good. Especially the shooter, or the American shooter, he was excellent. Oh my God, I loved it. I absolutely loved every minute of it. I couldn't get my hands off the screen, off the people. That show was great. It was good. It was really good. Uh, the guy who was a gunman played it very well. I didn't know what, I've never been to a play, so my first play, and I thought it was fantastic. So. And the ending, very good. Yeah, uh, it kept me on the edge of my seat, like, the entire time. I really enjoyed it, though. It definitely is, it's true, I think, and how People get so forgotten so easily. You do remember the story like, oh, people die, but you never remember the killer's name. And there is a great story behind them, like their life and what led them to that point. Really good play, Kevin Cole. Beautifully written, I loved it, I loved it. It was a moving, really moving piece. Really, thank you. Every, I think the world should see it. <laughs> My name is Kevin Cole. I am the playwright for Loving Arms. Wow. What is Loving Arms about? Well, okay. I don't want to give too much away. Like, I don't want to spoil anything. It's just beautiful, so, okay. <laughs> Loving Arms is a dark, dark, dark comedy. It's a play about human beings. I even humanize the American shooter. You know, it's not a political play. I think immediately people will assume it's an anti-gun play or a Second Amendment play. It's not at all a political play, and I make that really clear in the playbill. No need to intellectualize all of this and make connections between politics and art. Three strangers. Who are having a conversation about art and the different layers that art brings to this world. An American shooter walks in. I'm Joe Hyatt and I play the gunman. Once he's in the gallery with the three people, he's, they are locked in there together. He has a very in-depth, philosophical, existential conversation with two patrons who are there viewing the art and a docent who's on duty. But it's also about violence and art and the glorification of violence in media, but the de-glorification of it in reality. That tough, difficult contrast of we, we love guns and we love violence in the movies, but condemn in real life. For people who don't know me, I, I hope that they don't see the play. It's a dark comedy, you know, it's an absurdist comedy. And so I think they'll say, boy, this fellow must be really twisted. Here's a play about an American shooter and it's a dark comedy. And so I hope they'll take away from it that here's, here's someone who's trying to give a very sensitive, original treatment to something very delicate, something very complex, as opposed to someone who's irreverent, iconoplastic, um, gratuitously iconoplastic, someone who just wants to shock for the sake of shocking. I hope no one walks away thinking that. My name is Joe Obermuller. I am the director of Loving Arms. Let's rock and roll. <clears throat> Why did I choose to direct Loving Arms? Well, first of all, I've always hoped for an opportunity to produce one of his plays at USF. And then secondly, the subject matter is really relevant for us right now. And uh, just yesterday, another shooting occurred at a university in Texas. And so we get to tell a story and invite people to really think and consider this new age that we're in in America and how we regard violence. In addition to being a cliche and an allegory, I'm also a two-dimensional character in a poorly written movie. It's plays like Loving Arms that make me want to be an actor. Joe Hyatt playing the American shooter, he has to get in touch with some deep, dark topics. And he just handles that very professionally. I, I know I personally couldn't be this sardonic, evil, embodiment of an American shooter and then just carry on through my life like nothing's going on. 
Like that takes courage, that takes talent. So that's really, really impressive and fantastic to see. For this role, like the words are so, like they're all that I have to rely on. Like they're enough to portray that, that evil, that horrible, that violent, but I don't have to do the getting into the mind of the character. Like it's just the words, the words help me do that in a more healthy way as an actor. And like, that's another part of my process is I'm, I'm being very intentional in separating myself from this character and not bringing this character home with me because when I'm at home, I have a different role to play. And I don't, I don't want my family to be around this, this guy. I kill until I am killed or kill myself. And so I'm not, I'm not doing like the method actor approach. I'm not sure how you do that in a ethical way for this role. So it's just, it is all about knowing the text and having ideas about the words and questions that the text is asking. I am Kayla Miller. I am playing the part of the docent. She is in her mid-60s, a former smoker, but in reasonably good health. The definition of a docent is someone who is kind of like a tour guide. So you actually learn about the entomology of that in the show, so I do not want to give spoilers. I auditioned for Loving Arms because my favorite thing about theater is the ability to tell the stories and the truth of those stories. As someone who often closes my eyes, ears, and heart to violence and problems with my world, I avoid news. This is something for me to work through, and I think this is a good medium in which I know I would be able to go and see that and feel that pain and know more about these things I'm shielding myself from. I'm Lily Satterley, and I portray the character of woman. The second, sir, is a female, 36 years of age, single, no children. She has a PhD in linguistics. She lives with her sister on the east side. We believe that she is currently a barista. I have really grown to love and relate to this character because she serves some sass to the gunman. She's very real with the people around her. She's a strong feminist and I think that the audience will really enjoy seeing what she has to offer. During the play, I have found myself agreeing with some of the gunman's points, and I think that's intentional by Dr. Cole, is for us to see that, oh, the gunman is a human, and he actually has some valid thoughts, even though he's doing something horrific. And I am going into the field of elementary education, and as we know, there have been shootings in elementary schools as well as so many other places. Um, but it just feels really real for me when I'm acting and when I'm seeing the gunman. Oh yes, <laughs> poor English on my part. Must watch those terminal prepositions. I'm Devin Waltizen and I'm playing the character of Man. I auditioned for Loving Arms mostly because it is a change of pace for me. I don't really get to be in serious shows very often. Actually, this is my first one ever. And so I wanted to challenge myself and to try to change it up from my norm. He's a divorced man, the father of a 10 year old boy who is managing traffic. Lane flow equations, that is my vocation, my calling. Lane flow equations, lane flow equations, lane flow equations. He doesn't like his job, but he does it because that's, that's what he had to get into to please his father. If our jobs do define us as human beings, well, I'm in big trouble. Why is that? I manage traffic. He's complex in a way that he understands a lot about language, understands a lot of the meaning of words and origins of words, which you wouldn't necessarily think is the first thing a traffic manager would, would know about. But he comes to this art museum every week because it's an escape from this life of his that he that he dreads so much. My name is Addison Rayski and I am a part of one half of a very loving couple. I am Ben Woolmouth. I am playing both the young man 
in the show as well as voice number one. We have an annoying side to us, at least to me, because we're on our phones the whole time. We're, we're in an art gallery, but we're not really looking at the art. Can you believe that? Taking a selfie with a famous work of art? I mean, what a pair of idiots! And we're kind of used as a way to point out this is what's wrong with the world right now, which again is weird to say because I'm on my phone a lot, but it's true. It's weird to have someone come into an art gallery and stare at their phones instead of looking at the beauty that is the art. I was surprised at how emotional and psychologically uh, vulnerable I allowed myself to be in the second half of the play. The, the first half, you know, I'm just complete control of the characters and dialogue, and then in the second half, um, you begin to see, um, you know, a, a writer who's really grappling with difficult questions and concerns. And in some way, that, that makes sense in terms of the content of the play, because that's an American shooter causes chaos. When they enter a church, a school, uh, a music concert, that's what they do, and the second half of the place, I think, in, in some interesting ways, emulates that. I think the performing arts are important because it brings situations to life without making people feel accused of doing something wrong. I think that it's a good way to bring up a story, a situation through a story that the audience can, can experience for themselves without them being personally harmed and being able to empathize with those characters and to understand what's going on and to maybe even bring that into their own life and try to consider what they're doing um, and how they can change their, their perspective and their worldviews. Since this play doesn't take place in the realm of reality, our concept of authority is completely different. And it's, it's serious, but it's, it's comedic, it's wacky, and it's just something that I, like, I've had to juggle with in, in tone and approach, and it's just been so fun to deal with, but at the same time, it's just been challenging because you don't know what you really are supposed to be doing. Each time I go on the stage, I take something away that makes me not only a better actor, but a, bit, a better person. So two things happen at one time. One, I had writer's block. And two, the Marjorie Stoneman High School shooting happened in Florida. And I happened to be in Detroit. Uh, I was visiting Detroit Museum of Art. And these things sort of happened all at the same time. So when I, get home, when I got home, I committed myself one weekend to say I'm not coming out of my little corner of the basement until I have the draft, the basic outline of the play. And over the course of those two days, the play just emerged. I had no idea I was going to write a play about an art museum, about an American shooter. You know, it's those magical moments that happen in writing really rarely. I think people should know that it's hard. This isn't easy for us to do. I think like most Americans, anytime there's a shooting, especially one that involves children, um, I go through what is now unfortunately the same set of emotions, uh, the same set of frustrations, anger, uh, fear for my own children, uh, and then the great sadness. I like stories that mean things, that ask questions. What the second half of the play is, is, is quite frankly, just sort of a look into my mind and my brain uh, and the kinds of ways I, I think about this malaise we have in our country. Uh, you see my own personal fears, my own personal anxieties, my, my anger, my um, all of these emotion, all of these emotions that are really hard to articulate. That's why I decided to be in this play is because I want to be an art that's meaningful, an art that makes people talk. I hope they leave thinking about it because it is incredibly thought-provoking. It asks a lot of the audience. It's not, it's not a pick-me-up. It's not, 
It's not a play for the sole purpose of entertainment. How we can make the world a better place and to really listen to what is said. Because there are a lot of things that we talk about, like the value of humanity and how much we place on human life. Another thing that, that I've been left thinking about a lot is this compassionate action. There's, there's parts in the play where compassion is shown to the gunman and is it fully received? Is compassionate action, it can do a lot, but is it enough? And that's really where the play leaves us. Life is priceless. I do have a favorite line. That favorite line is, I can't give it away. Yes, I do. <laughs> or docent intentions. Ah, okay, yes, all right. So the gunman says something about America being the land of the free, home of the concealed carry. What is your name? At one point, woman is talking about a shooting that happened in 1967 and the other people with her in the scene are saying, oh, I, I don't remember that one. And she kind of says, of course not. It's like everything else that's horrific in American history, we allow the violence to drift off into blissful forgetfulness. Oh, my favorite line in the play, it's actually, it's actually my least favorite line. But my favorite line is when... Because it always gets a laugh out of Joe. One of the characters really stands up to the gunman and tells him the truth. And the gunman says, Ladies and gentlemen, I think this woman deserves a theater scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> and every single time, Joe Obermuller just cracks up. It's a brilliant line. And I do the, the eye roll because it's ridiculous. But there's a lot of lines like that. Dr. Cole has done a really marvelous job of, of telling a very dark story in a comedic way. That's why we call it dark comedy. I am a big pun fan. And there are so many puns. Thank you, Dr. Gibbicle. <laughs>in that little video where that Apollonia's making. Yeah. <laughs> in the lower left-hand corner of the lower screen. lower left-hand corner <laughs> of that video <laughs> Apollonia's video. making. I can't remember what the question was. <laughs>